few things to do now that we've added in the upvoting. Let's go ahead and create a form. We want our members to be able to submit products, so we need to create a form to do that. I've left the intro container that was here and just deleted everything out, but it was a great starting point and the the setup is already done for you. So don't don't work harder, work smarter. So I um, went ahead and added in a div block. I pulled in a header to say welcome back and then another header to say member. So we're going to add in a lot of customization and attributes that this will say the member's name when they log in. We'll add that in when we add a member stack, but for now, you're just gonna wanna wrap this div horizontally so that it stretches all in one line. From there, we're gonna add in a form. So if you don't know how to do that, just click the little plus sign, come on over and pick form block and just drag it in. Once you have your form block in, we're gonna do quite a bit of work in here to get everything set up. Now, this needs to match exactly as our collection list is set up. So we need to make sure that we're including all of those fields. A couple of things to keep in mind as you're building this out. The attachments field is only available if you have a paid Webflow plan. So for demonstration purposes, since this is just a demonstration site, I've gone ahead and just pulled in a text field, but you will wanna make sure that you're pulling in an attachment field, which is over under the elements panel, under the form setting and the file upload. So as you can see, the little star indicates that you need a paid account for that. You would bring that here, same thing for company logo, so that they can upload those. As you're working through these, you want to be sure that you're putting IDs on all of these. This will become incredibly important if you ever want to get this data later on. It's great to set yourself up for success now. So include the ID fields for product name, attachments, company logo, and tags, platforms, the website URL, and finally the product description. When we get to tags and platforms, you need to bring in a select field, but I did quite a bit of work around this. Now, there are two options. So I've done a more advanced version here where I used a bit of code to have these fields populate with a collection list. These are the tags and platforms collection list. I'll walk through that next, but if you preferred not to be that advanced, you could absolutely pull in a select field and just duplicate out the tags and platforms. Totally up to you. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you're more comfortable with. It depends on how much data manipulation you're doing and how many automation tools you're using. Having the embedded collection list could become a little bit easier as you move into more automations. So if you are using the automation, well, if you're not using the automation, in the select field, it will come in and you'll probably have something that looks like first, second, third choice. Just go ahead and name them to be exactly what the tag choices are. Now you may need to adjust these depending on what your tags are for your particular product and how you're using them. But be sure that the text and the value are the same and are the same as the tags. So we're referencing this collection list. So, oops. So it needs to be all of these. Okay, so you would do that for the tags and platforms. If you'd like to do the advanced version I did here, this is how you set it up. So I've gone ahead and pulled in a collection list well, first things first, as you can see, I've deleted out all the choices from both of these. The plat or the tags is a single select, so I have unchecked allow multiple. And then I've pulled in the collection list underneath. As you can see, all I've done is pulled in the collection list and given a class name as tag dash item to this first collection for the tags, and for platforms, it's platform dash item. As you can see here, platform dash item. From there, I pulled in two different text fields and linked them to the tag name and the tag ID. 
Once you have those in place, be sure that you've named them exactly as I have. So tag dash item, let me expand this field for you. So tag item for the collection item here, and then tag dash name and tag dash ID. Same thing with platform, platform dash item, platform dash name, and platform dash ID. This will be important in the script. I've included the script in the notes in case you want to use it so you can easily copy and paste, but it will only work if you use those specific names. So from there, we're going to go ahead to our settings, page settings, and this code is the code that we're using. So this is a little bit of JavaScript that essentially says, take all of the items here and put it in this field. Shout out to the Pixel Geek who walked us through a tutorial before on how to do this. I've taken it and done it for a couple of the different platforms here. So that is where that information came from. As I said, the script is in the notes, so you can go ahead and just copy that down as long as everything is named the same. Okay, so once you have that all named the same, just go ahead and hide these. We don't need them. We will that one in. Okay, great. So we have those two fields set up. Now we need to write in our product URL. So go ahead and make that a text field again. And then the description, you're gonna to wanna to pull in a text area and have everything set up. From there, we're gonna do a little bit of fun work with the submit. Go ahead and style your button however you'd like. And when you're done, go to the success message. So under success, if you are clicked on the success message, click on the gear icon and click success. You'll see that I've altered this text a little bit. This is very easy to do. All you need to do is click the little style brush here, remove this background color, I made it transparent. I updated the text to say submitting your product, please wait. If you are doing product reviews, this would be a great opportunity to say, thank you for your submission. Please allow 24 to 48 hours notice. I'm not sure how your platform is working. Um, and that would totally depend on you and whatever you'd like to do. So add in your text here, and then we're gonna put in this nice little Lottie animation. So head over to Lottie files and grab that animation. You can upload it here and just pull it in. That way, it's playing those nice little three dots when you are waiting for it to resubmit. We're gonna add a little bit more code that will automatically refresh to a new, a new form for us. This is kind of a really nice feature with a simple, simple bit of text. Again, just copy and paste. I have it included in the notes, so you don't need to duplicate the work. So if you come over here, you can see this nice script at the top. So the script at the top is what's going to allow the page to automatically refresh. And while these nice three little Lottie dots are animating, it will come right back to a new product submission. We're gonna go ahead and use this code again on our product uh, template form where we're going to comment and add in a comment form. So we're gonna copy this script and reuse this same Lottie structure for future. So now that we have our form all set up, let's make sure we move back to the normal product state. That way it appears correctly when we hit publish. There's just a couple more adjustments we're going to make on this page and then we're ready to move on to our collection lists. Be sure up at the top here for your nav bar that you've set all plot all products to be the member only home. Remember this page is for our logged in members so we want it to link back here. We're gonna add a my account link and we'll link that using member stack in a few minutes. And then we're gonna have the log out button. So make sure that's on the nav bar. And then here in our uh, main product section, you can go ahead and style this however you would like. The few things I want to mention are, you remember from the original template that we had a website link we're going to want to go ahead and remove that out. And what we're going to do is instead either make this image container 
uh, or this text block or perhaps both if you would like into link blocks so that they're linking to our product template page. We want to be sure that we are getting down to the product itself. So if you're not familiar, you can just go ahead and right click and convert that to a link block and then click the little gear icon to grab the purple collection page and go to current product. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And the last step is to add in a comments field. So we want to show that there are comments. If you prefer not to show that there are comments, you don't need to do that. All I did was simply duplicate this platforms div and duplicate the class to comments. And then I wrote see comments and linked it just as I did here. I linked it to the product uh, itself. So you're going to the same spot, the product template, and we'll just go ahead and set that up. So I'm back over in this template and those are the only adjustments that I've made. So feel free to go through and set it up. But once you've done that, we are done with the pages that exist. We need to set up two more pages, but first we have to set up our collection list because the last two pages go with our collection list. So we have to make sure products are set up correctly and then add in a members and product comments. We're gonna go ahead and do that next.